Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Defining Dad Bod's Transformation Tuesday. I am John Bauer, and I am always excited to sit down and chat with people uh, to talk to them about their transformations. And the big thing that I've always come to, or that I've come to find out um, over the months of having done these, and it's kind of hard to believe that I've been doing them as long as I have, but um, the one thing that I've come to understand the more and more that I do of these is transformations look different for everyone and fitness looks everyone different for everyone and that's really important to keep in mind that um everybody starts from a different spot will has a goal to get to a different spot and that their fitness is different based on really what they want to accomplish and what they want to do and i think today's story is a great example of that um we have had stories of great huge 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 amounts of weight loss um, and other stories of not so much. And it doesn't really matter the amount. What matters, I think, in the end is just the general feeling of health and fitness. And I think that's something to keep in mind as, as we talk about these and get into more. And today, I have Lance Seaman with me. And Lance is going to share his story. Um, it's an interesting one and a, one that's a little bit dear to my heart in some of the connections that we've kind of found that we've had in the past. We are both farm boys, we've discovered. Um, probably neither one of us looks like a farm boy or neither one of us would anybody be would believe um, that we're farm boys, but we both are farm boys. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, Lance, especially if you kind of look back over, you know, even the past 20 or 20 or 30 years, a lot of people who are in rural settings in the beginning have a lot, have a very different start and a very different mindset, very different community and exposure to all of this than people that we talk to that have always lived in areas of the country where fitness and health um, are kind of just the norm. And I think if, if you go to stories like maybe yours or mine, um, when you get into those rural backgrounds, it's just, it's a different mindset from everybody from the very, very beginning. And so that's a little bit near and dear to my heart. And it makes the story a little bit different as well, which is great. Um, Lance, I always love to start these, just kind of give us a little bit of a background where you're at right now, what part of the country you're in, uh, how long you've been married, what you do, kids and things like that. Well, for sure, yeah. I'm I'm in uh, the Mid Ohio region, about halfway between Cleveland and Columbus. My wife and I have been married eleven and a half years. I married my high school sweetheart, which was kind of cool. We met uh, in through 4-H, and uh, I was the uh, I took I went into the horse program in 4-H because for me it was a mathematical equation. There was 125 students enrolled in the horse program, and three of them were boys, right? <laughs> The odds were good. The odds were very good. <laughs> I left the sheep barn and the cattle barn, and I said, the horse barn is where it's at, right? <laughs> I was the horse king. The three guys kind of passed it around. I was the horse king one year. My wife was the queen. Literally, that's how we met, and the rest is history. Wow. Yeah, so we've got two boys, four and six, and they were or five, almost six, and, and they were a big reason that I kind of started down this health journey, right? Because my goodness, they've got a lot of energy and I wanted to be able to keep up with them as they get older. Yeah, and that's, and that's such a catalyst for so many of us is, you know, you get to that point and, and, and I'm, mine is an example too, you get to that point where, um, you know, you start having kids and you start having active kids and you kind of realize that, you know, your whole perspective on life shifts a little bit. You realize you want to be around a lot longer um, you want to do a lot more and things like that. And so, yeah, that's absolutely, absolutely the norm um, that once you have that. Tell us a little bit about your background. And I mentioned it briefly, and, and you've kind of alluded to it with, with your 4-H involvement uh, and things like that. But kind of if you want to go into your background, what did home life look like for you as far as for fitness as well as nutrition when you were a young kid? And you're from Ohio your whole life? Okay. Going, you know, it's it's funny that you, I was just thinking about it when you were talking about the similar backgrounds and stuff like that, because growing up, we would almost even, it was almost joking or making fun of people that went to the gym every day, right? And I remember we'd joke about, oh, they just need to bail hay or they need to do this or they need, it, there's some truth to that, right? There and is. Growing up, the, the other thing that compounded, I think, 
is we hardly ever ate out. You know what I mean? Like there was a Ponderosa 20 miles away. And now I was in that town. I just got home from doing a meeting. That's why I'm dressed up in that town where now Ponderosa is gone, of course. Right. But there's all these other restaurants and all these, but we, we ate at home. We ate steak and, and we ate a lot of steak and chicken and, and but you know, steak, like growing up, this is going to sound, I, I don't mean this to sound privileged, but I disliked steak because we ate it so much. <laughs> Not I, I can relate. I, I can relate exactly. We had, and, and I can remember vividly, and, and you've probably had this emotion too. I can remember vividly one week in high school. I literally think I said to my mom, are we honestly having steak again tonight? Exactly. <laughs> they, we ate uh, a lot of lamb because I grew up on a- Oh, had, wow. Deep, right? So we ate a lot of lamb kebabs, lamb, not old mutton, like good, high quality lamb. So a lot of those foods, it just, it's what we grew up on. We didn't eat a lot of processed stuff. Right. And leaving the, or kind of moving forward into my high school and teen years, I was working construction, working with daddy as a fence company, building, uh, you know, anything from cattle fence to doing airport fences and stuff like that. And yeah, we might eat at the burger joint or whatever and get 2000 calories, but you know, we were working 16 hours a day. We were working out in 35 degree weather. We were working in 20 degree, like, so I'd burn it all. Like it was no big deal. Right. I just kind of got that habit. If I'm going too fast, you can see. No, you're, you're good. You're good. I got, I got that habit. Right. And then yeah. uh, my wife and I started a couple companies. One of them, I drove truck over the road, which probably isn't a good uh, habit to get in eating a lot. Right. And then, we started a, a home-based business that went pretty well and, and was able to turn more into a, a stay-at-home dad and a, a lifestyle of, of being there with my kids, which is something I wanted to do. I mean, growing up on the farm, I believe before the Industrial Revolution, for thousands of years, fathers were primarily there to raise their sons, right? And I was blessed to, in that my dad did the farm, and I, and I was able to be there with my dad. And he never did everything perfect, but you know what? I was able to grow up in that environment right there with my father, right? Yeah. And my, teaching me the knowledge that they had. And I wanted to be able to pass that on to my kids. So being able to start a couple businesses and, and be, run those from the house and be with my kids, it also meant that I wasn't out doing that physical labor anymore, right? And those, those habits that I developed of eating so much processed food, grabbing the, the soda, never looking at labels. Like I never, it was... I was 30, 31, 32 years old, probably before I ever even read a label on yeah. a pack. <laughs> Crazy, right? Let me ask you a real quick question. I, I do want to jump back on one thing before you go too far. Um, you know, one of the things that I remember from being on a farm and, and, and eating at home a lot and I don't know if you are this way too. I mean, it was, it was not processed. It was, it was somewhat healthy. Um, but the two things that, that I always wondered about, whether it was kind of a common thing, and I'd be curious to know for you, there really was no concept of portions. <laughs> I mean, was, that, was it that way for you as well? You pretty much eat till you're full and you get seconds and thirds. And yeah. Half. Yeah, it, it was portions, and the only other thing, I mean, there was a lot of butter, there was a lot of fried stuff, I mean, there, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, as natural as the food was, it always wasn't prepared in a way that now you and I would sit and talk about as healthy. Was it that way for you as well? I'd say there was a lot of truth to that, I mean, and some of my favorite dishes are like, potato pancakes with a lot of butter and stuff like yeah. that but doesn't fit into the the diet plan that I have now right yeah yeah um but I mean being all that you were still very active so it is one of the and, and what do you I mean what what do you think that I mean as as great as it is as you were active do you feel like at some point that you really had to reteach yourself a lot about nutrition and about portion control because you didn't pick that up when you were a kid on the farm. No, I mean, but I burn, I burn it all off too. Right. 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 It, is, it was definitely a learning curve. And that's why what I'm doing now, I consider more 
a lifestyle than a diet because I, I've seen I've seen diets come and go with people I love and care about and you know and it, as soon as you start something you you're gonna fall off the wagon right right and, yeah but a lot of people do right so I consider it more a lifestyle change where I still eat now do I gorge myself no not necessarily but if I want pizza I'll have pizza but if I can be disciplined 80% of the time, 90% of the time, 10% of the time, you know what, if I want a piece of pizza or I want a whatever, that's not necessarily in my 90% diet plan, I go have it, right? Right, right. And that's important because like you said, it, it, it is a lifestyle. It's not something where you can, you know, commit to doing a certain diet if you can't commit to it, doing it all the time. And that's, and I think that that's an important factor as, as people talk about health and fitness is not trying to undertake something that's not manageable on a long scale, on a long-term scale. You're, you're absolutely right. And as, and to answer your question specifically about portion control, I believe as I started cutting out a lot of the overly processed stuff, my body, like my head was, was not telling my stomach that I needed more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So many of these, these fad diets and, and drink this or drink this shake or eat this bar or whatever. There's so many of these and a lot of health and wellness companies out there that try to pitch this stuff, right? Overpriced. And I'm not knocking, I probably shouldn't even go down that road. No, but, you're fine. But you know what? You can do it and eat. I, I drive 60,000 miles a year in my personal pickup truck. Mm -hmm. it, I don't drive for work. You know what I mean? I drive my kids to jujitsu. I drive to jujitsu. I drive, I just, we drive a lot. We're active. So you can eat out at fast food restaurants and still manage to eat healthy. You don't have, like for me, one of my favorite things was the, the four cheese Whopper and fries and a Coke. Dude, that's a quick way to get fat. And I love it. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Um, go back a little bit as far as what point in your life did your lifestyle switch from an active one to a not so active one? Kind of give us that perspective. Well, my son, my oldest son was born January, 2013. So, <laughs> but and that, and that was pretty much, that was pretty much the switchover. I did a stint of over the road trucking in 2011, which, and then through some of the business system stuff that I learned, I was able to systematize that business. And I went back to construction work until my son was born. And one of the last jobs I did was with my dad was the Parkersburg, West Virginia airport in 2012. And we wrapped that up, I think in December. And my son was born in January. And that was pretty important to me when my son was born that I didn't want to be an absent father, right? The things that we previously talked about about the industrial revolution and all that, I wanted to be there with my kid. And the stuff that my wife and I were able to learn from our business put us in a position that I could be a stay-at-home dad, which really, like that went from working outside in the cold, miserable weather a lot of times to being at home. And that was a huge switch. So that would have been six years ago next month. Okay. And so with that in mind, I mean, when you switched over to that non-active lifestyle, was it something you realized you were switching into right away and, and made the adjustments necessary or did things kind of go downhill a little bit before they got better? You know, what's, you know, what's funny, John, it, it definitely went downhill because I was still kind of lean, kind of mean, right? And I think some of that was probably my age intersecting with my age, and metabolism slowing down and all that intersecting with the sedentary lifestyle all at once, right? Because I would have been, oh shoot, don't quote, I think I would have been 27 at the time. Okay. So that's, and it's funny because I've been telling my brother, hey, your metabolism is going to slow down. Hey, you're, and now he's starting to reach that point, right? So I think it did, it got worse for me for a little bit. And and then in the interest of full disclosure, I even, you know, maybe even to a point that I was drinking maybe a little more than I should have for a bit because I felt like this weird, even though I knew the importance of being a stay-at-home dad and being there and taking care of the kids and stuff, going from 
getting up every day at 6 a.m. and going and hitting it to making that switch, it, even emotionally, it was working. Now, wow. I was an emotional eater, John. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't supposed to be therapy for me. So. <laughs> but, but no, to answer your question, it, it did go downhill a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't change anything. I'd still right. swing and whatever. Um, and then maybe I added a little more drinking on top of that, which, you know, I'm not against drinking, but when it was too much. Yeah. So what in your mind, what was, what was the trigger point that made you realize something needed to change? You know, I kind of knew it for a while. And it's funny because <clears throat> it's funny because I tried different things and, and I had even tried to track it even back as far back as 2015, I pulled up uh, my fitness pal on my phone. Right. And as far back as 2015, I saw points that I was like trying to track it. Like I was trying to watch it. Right. I, you know, I'd try it here and there and then just, you yeah, know, whatever. I'd fall off the wagon. I never had any good plan, if you will, right? Right. And spring of this year, probably February or March, my wife's like, hey, I think I want to try this, this keto thing. She'd researched it a little bit. She's a, uh, she's got, she's got her doctorate's degree in pharmacy and she researched it a little bit. And she said, I think I kind of want to try this. Not, maybe not extreme. But you know what? Cutting out overly processed white breads and stuff like that couldn't hurt, you know? Sure. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I kind of half-heartedly agreed to do it with her. And then I went to a jiu-jitsu competition at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. And I was in a weight class in the I cut weight like and felt miserable cutting weight to get down into the 180 weight class. And I was in the 180 weight, 180 to 190, but over, or no, under 180, I'm sorry, under 180, but over 30 years old, okay? Okay. There was nobody in my class. So is what they do is they say, okay, we're going to bump you down into the 18 to 30 year old 180 class, right? Which, cool, whatever. Here's the only problem. I was in that weight class because I was overweight. The 18 and 20 year olds that were in that weight class were in that weight class because they were ripped, right? So that question that always comes up in jujitsu of, well, is muscle important or not? You know, yeah, it makes a difference. And at that point, my wife was trying her thing or just started on it. And I realized, you know what? This is not like you know, the kids and all that played into it too. But it, it was like the, the icing on the cake to realize. I'm not in my peak physical condition and I can see it on the mats. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. was, plenty. so that's when I said, you know what, what could it hurt? I'll do. And there were some trials and errors there to get it working for my training schedule and what I do. But that's, that was the point. April, whenever the Arnold classic was in 2017 or 2018 this year, that was when I was like, okay, I got to do something. And what, and what weight were you at that point? At that point, I would have been usually walking around 186, 187. I cut down to get under 180. Okay. Was that, was that your highest, the 186 or 187? Yeah, that was probably my, yeah, that would have probably been my highest. Okay. And how tall are you? Because I know we always got to, when people say 186, 187, to me, I, I, I haven't been 186 or 187 since college, but, you know, I, but I'm 6'4". So, I mean, obviously that matters. How tall of a guy are you? You'd tower over me. So my driver's, <laughs> my driver's license says five seven, but you know I might be closer to five six, right? Okay, I mean, okay, a, a gentleman's five seven, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> I think my driver's license says I weigh one thirty five too, and they say women lie about that stuff. Oh no, oh no, we're we're as we're as guilty about that as anybody. Let me tell you, yeah, my my driver's license never got anywhere near my high weight. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one, my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you on that one. I'm definitely, and, but, but yeah, that, that the driver's license definitely made, I, I had every half inch added on to there as I possibly could for the height too. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
so you got up there. So, so what did you do? You said your wife was working on keto diet. Did you try the keto diet? I did. And that's, you know, what, what I'm doing now is I would call it a lazy keto diet. Okay. And I can say lazy because that implies that I'm not managing it, right? Yeah. But I was kind of strict for a while. You could probably sell a few books calling it the lazy keto diet, but you probably... <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure somebody would buy it like yeah um, yeah whatever <laughs> um but but no like I was I was trying to stay below 20 gram or 20 carbs and, and I was really trying to stay in that range mm -hmm. and well was in my training maybe somebody that was working a desk job and, and wasn't doing because when you're in jiu-jitsu it's like you have high intensity you know I might go what we call roll which is some of the biggest workout that you'll do, I might go do that for an hour and a half, right? Uh -huh. And it's, you get your heart rate flowing, you're pouring sweat, it's high intensity. Yeah. And when I was under 20 grams, I would just get in a fog. I just wasn't operating. Like, okay. I was, because it's, it's like, they call it human chess. So your mind has to be, mind really has to be working. Right. It just wasn't, that wasn't working for me. And I talked to one of my professors in jiu-jitsu and, and that's what he was saying he said well you know carb maybe carb load before you burn up to 60 car this is what he said you burn yeah. up to 60 or while you're training and you know here's some things that, that metabolize fast and i that's when i started to go okay which is kind of cool because i know hey i'm gonna go work out so i can eat whatever i have a, a sinful desire of liking the double cheeseburgers at mcdonald's you know what i'm saying so I can run through McDonald's on my way, have a double cheeseburger, not feel bad about it, because I can still stay at a deficit for what I'm going to burn. You are, uh, now I've been doing this podcast interview since March. You are the first person since March that has advocated for a double cheeseburger at McDonald's. <laughs> Wait, what is that? I do throw I'm, I'm just, and I'm just saying to my, I'm just saying to my audience, we are not advocating that everybody go out and pick up a double cheeseburger at McDonald's. We're, 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 we're clarifying that right now. But, but, <laughs> bizarre, right? No, uh, I, and, I, and I totally get your point. I'm just giving you a hard time because, because like I said, we've, we've talked to a lot of people and you know, it's, it's, it's all about getting away from that. But what you're saying is absolutely true. And, and this kind of goes to, um, goes to a point I kind of mentioned at the beginning a little bit is that fitness and getting to fitness for different types of sports and athletics is going to look different when you do something like jiu-jitsu or you know triathlons or, or something like that you've got to have that fuel to burn and you've got to figure out how you're going to do it and so you know in the long run you're doing a physical activity that's getting you into a better healthy state. You're in your case, jujitsu. Yeah. You, you break the rules from time to time when you've got that stuff, you see that you see the, you know, the, the stories about athletes, you know, carving up and eating just the insane amount, you know, of food before an event or something like that. It, it's just, I think what's important is, you know, when you talk about these things, and, and that's why I'm saying this, is the important thing is that you keep it in the context of what activity you're doing. If you're going to go out and run two miles, you're not going to carve up with a double cheeseburger. If you're going and doing jujitsu, which is a constant high intensity activity over a longer period of time, your body has got to have the fuel. Or like you said, you're going to get in that fog. And, and even getting that double cheeseburger isn't something I do every no. time. I do. Right. Exactly. Top bun. I got in the habit. I take the top bun off and I throw it back in the bag. You know, I eat it with the bottom bun on. So it, it's not, and a lot of times, quite often, I have a piece of Dave's killer bread with some butter on it. Uh -huh. and that's what I'll eat before I go, right? Right. But on the back side of that, you're right. I might cheat and get something like that. But on the back side, I'm eating cheeseburgers without buns. I'm eating the, uh, my thing that I probably eat more than I should is the Arby's farmhouse salad with roast turkey, extra bacon, extra cheese. You know, like I eat a lot of those. I, I use, uh, 
I have protein or replacement shakes. Uh, Molk is one that I like made by Origin Manufacturing. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite protein shakes, right? So yeah. that stuff on the back side that, uh, that, does that make sense? Like I'm Oh, not, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, double cheeseburger, but that might be a once a week if that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as you're doing this, you said you were, you were cutting a little bit. Have you, have you lost some weight then through your jujitsu and through your dieting or wh where are you at these days? See, I would say it's probably, I'm sure jujitsu helps, but jujitsu alone wasn't getting it, right? Okay. <laughs> when I was at that point in April that I said, hey, I got to do something. I'd already been training jujitsu for two years. Okay. From five times a week for extended mm -hmm. And it just wasn't getting me there. Because I would do that. Here's, here's a great irony. It was almost, almost religiously, I would go train jiu-jitsu, and I would swing into Burger King and get the, uh, the four cheese Whopper, a fry, and a Coke, right? Which I would go train hard, and I felt like I earned this, but without like studying or without researching, I was putting more into my body than I just burned. So I right. was... I wasn't creating a deficit. I was making it worse, right? So right. jujitsu wasn't getting it. But by the time I put jujitsu and that together, that put me in a spot that I've lost about 35 pounds at this point. Okay. Comfortably. Not, not crazy. Not, not in a week. Not in, you know, like over the last eight, eight well, 10 months. Yeah. Eight, 10. And and where are you at with your goal as far as as far as um, fitness with the thirty five pounds and stuff? You, you know, John, this is going to probably sound terrible, and I don't know if this is the answer that you you want to hear. But I don't have a number written in blood up on my my goal board, or that's you know, fine. board behind me. I don't have a number like that's where I want to get. I want. I really wanted to get below one fifty five, right? Okay. And I got there, and probably to move, really move on, I should have that next number written down. And, and I just started taking activity, not really even believing I would get there, right? And that sounds bad, because I know all the success literature and everything will tell you, you have to believe, you have to believe, right? And I felt like the little boy, this is kind of timely since it's December, but in a little bit of a way, I felt like the little boy on the Polar Express movie, shaking the bell, going, I want to believe, I want to hear it, you know, and if, if you guys haven't seen the movie, if you don't have kids out there that are watching this, I'm sorry, but, uh, but I've got kids, so I'm going to use it as, but I felt that way, you know, like, I want to believe, I want to believe, but I started saying, man, 155 would be really nice, and then I just started doing some action, and I, I, I acted my way into believing, right, so, I'd say that next goal for me is 140. And even as I'm on this call right now, it's convicting me to say, hey, knucklehead, get that written up on the board and believe in it, right? That's great. That's great. I mean, yeah. And, and I, I and, you know, and it's, and I think the thing is too, I mean, you talk about goals and we talk about weight loss and we talk about numbers. And I think it's, I think that's important. But I think also what you talk about is just being more comfortable doing what you're doing is, I mean, that's, that's an important part of it right there, whether it's 155, 150, 145, whatever it is. Um, you've got certain activity that you do with your jujitsu. You get certain activity you want to do with your kids. That's, I mean, that's almost as much of a guideline or a point for fitness for you as a specific number. Absolutely. And, and you know what, you know, it's funny, John, like, even just being able to fit into clothes that I haven't worn. Right. Out. Yeah. Like, funny, but this shirt that I'm wearing here, it's, it was one of, and this was probably a really stupid, not probably, it was a dumb financial decision, but it was a, it's a barber, barber shirt. It was over a hundred dollar shirt. Right. And I bought it when we were first married and it's been in my closet for a long time. I haven't been able to wear it. It's one of my favorite shirts in the world. And just a couple weeks ago, I'm like, I found it, you know what I mean? And I'm like, holy crap, I bet I could fit that shirt. I've been wearing it like four times a week, you know? People <laughs> think but 
but I'm wearing, I'm fitting into jeans that I haven't worn in forever. I'm sure. fitting into, that alone to me, yeah. like, I don't, I don't need to be totally ripped and, you know, I don't know, maybe my wife would appreciate that, but, uh, <laughs> but I, that's not my goal, right? I want right. to be with my kids. I don't want, they're, they're both in jujitsu and I want to make sure that I can kick their butt when they get older. So I got to keep, I got to keep after that myself, right? Yeah, exactly. No, and, and, I, and, and it's like we said at the beginning, I mean, fitness is different for everybody. I mean, fitness is not about a body fat number. It's not about a weight number. It's, it's a variety of things. It's a variety of things based on the activity. It's a variety of things based on you. Everybody's going to have different goals. And I think the thing about it is we need to see that all of those things define fitness. That there's yeah. not one anything that says, well, I'm more fit than you. And I mean, we, we sometimes get wrapped into that ourselves, but it's certainly hard. We need to say, well, that doesn't mean anything. Fitness for you is different than fitness for me. Yes. And, and, that's, and, it, and it needs to be our own definition, not a comparison. And that's, I think that's such a key point. And I think that's why so many of these super strict diet plans don't work like and a lot of them do right yeah. but when they work people don't stick to them like right. they need, need to i believe at least for me needed to work out my own hey this works for me for my activity my and one of the biggest things that i haven't mentioned yet but is convicting to me and i should know this because in in my business we talk about being an example and and, and uh one of the companies i own we teach uh leadership development is huge and uh, personal development and that kind of stuff, right? Like mm -hmm. we do that through corporations and whatnot, but we, we do a lot of that with parents and parenting. And we talk about kids watching the example of the parents and all this stuff, right? Yeah. And I didn't think about it as it related to my diet, but is what's crazy is my kids request salads when we go to Arby's. Wow. And I've got pictures of them in the back seat of my truck eating salads, right? That my kids ask, how many carbs? Is that healthy? Like, and, and I, kids are totally different. Like we give them carbs. I mean, they, you know, sure, they don't, right. but I just think it's so cool that I've got a four-year-old and a five-year-old that love salads. Yeah. We had salads from Arby's multiple times this week and it's gotten so bad. The manager at the Arby's 10 miles down the road here, our closest Arby's, she makes, she'll get side salads for my kids because, you know, they're a little bit smaller. And then she'll take a little bit of turkey off of a slider sandwich and then some bacon. She makes them custom kids salads. But make no mistake, our kids are watching us. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that's great. And I mean, talk about not only your own fitness, but what you're passing on as, as a legacy. I mean, that's, that's incredible. That's and, absolutely incredible. I mean, but beyond that, even like in this, I don't want to overstep any bounds, but yeah. like even, you know, we cut out all pop in our house. Just little things like that. We cut out all pop and we replaced it with a supplement. And I don't even, this is hilarious. I met the guy accidentally, uh, Jocko Willink. Oh, I met wow. And without even knowing who he was. <laughs> <laughs> you've just you've just earned a huge amount of jealousy from a lot of people who watch this because he's he's a he's a i mean yeah he's a big name in in the industry yeah I went to a jujitsu camp that he was at and i was reading his book at the time extreme ownership and i'm like hey this guy is going to be at the camp like i had no idea didn't know about yeah. but the reason that is important for the uh cutting out pop was we replaced it with his Jocko Discipline. It's a uh, lemon lime drink, you know, whatever. And and I this is probably more than I should, but I drink four or five of them a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kids drink them, and they're super high vitamin C. They're healthy. My kids love them. Now my yeah. little, I've got a, I've got a, you know, we've got family members that feed their kids pop, and I'm like, yeah. You know, it kind of makes my toes curl a little bit. Yeah. But, my kids drink discipline. My kids drink, uh, Jocko just came out with that warrior kid protein drink stuff. They drink that and they love it. Like yeah. that's their chocolate milk. But I feel good about it because it's healthy, but where are they getting that from? They're watching mom and dad 
Yeah. Choices, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm absolutely I'm not trying to toot my own horn when I say no, that. no, but no, but I mean, and and that's but you're you're not at all. I mean, you're you're reminding us of one of the reasons that we're doing this. I mean, we we talk about it as defining dad bod, and we talk about it as our own transformation. But one of the greatest things that we can do when we're doing these things is set that example. Because, you know, just like we talked about at the beginning, you came from a farm. You developed the eating habits of your parents. Good or bad, you developed the eating habits of your parents. And you have ch changed, you know, what, what, what is going to go on down and what they're going to teach their kids. And they're going to pick up things and they're going to learn things, you know, over the years as they grow up. But they're going to start from this healthy basis, which is something that you and I didn't have at that age. That's, you know what, and I love, I love what you, what you just said there. And you know what, and I don't know if I'm going to say we, I didn't have it. We ate out of the garden all the time and stuff. Right. But teenage years, it turned into more processed stuff. Right. Something that you just said, and I didn't get it in the fact of health, but one of my favorite books, a book called Mentoring Matters, uh, one of my favorite quotes in that book is, and I'm paraphrasing a bit, so if I don't nail it exactly. But one of my favorite quotes in that is, are we career people that just happen to have some kids, or are we the type of parents that intentionally raise our grandchildren through our children? That's a great way to look at it. And what you just said there, you know what? I was not doing, in that area of stewardship, I was not doing well because they would see me just eat whatever crap I could fit into my mouth. Yeah. And now I feel a little better, even to the exercising point. Like I mentioned, my wife and I get up and do some HIIT training some mornings. Right. You know what? I've watched our sons doing planks and stretches. Yeah. And these different things. And I'm thinking, hmm, where did they see that at? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're setting the example. We're setting the example for for teaching them. And I love the way you put that about teaching our grandchildren. I mean, that's a great way to look at it. That's a great way to look at it. Not perfect. I screw that up all the time. But we all do. We all do. And the whole concept is you get 1% better every day that you get 1% better every day. You never, you're never going to have it perfect. And, and, and like I said, they're going to learn things along the way. Science is going to show something different along the way, but you're giving them the ground. You're giving them the foundation for whatever they build on. You're giving them that foundation the best that you can. Absolutely. If one of, one of my goals is that my best can be their starting point. Yeah. If that's, if that's what I can do, I would be thrilled, right? And I'm going to do things that they're not going to agree with when they're my age. My dad, did, my dad did the best he could, and he's still a big influence in my life, right? Yeah. Things that I might look back and say, well, I didn't necessarily agree with that or as I read and grow. And, but you know what? He did the best he could with the information he had and yep. ended up being great. I mean, he taught me so many things, right? And I hope I can do that for my kids. Yep. I can't think of a better way to finish a story about defining dad bod than with, with what we've accomplished for our kids. I think that's, that's a fantastic way to do it. Um, anything else that you have for advice or suggestions or encouragement to, to people looking to try and do, do their own kickstart of, of, of a transformation? You know what, like you said, that principle of 1% every day is, you know, it doesn't have to be anything radical. Like it really, really doesn't. I still eat out a lot. I still, my lifestyle hasn't changed a ton, mm -hmm. except I'm making choices on what, what goes in every day. Yeah. And I think, oh, I think that's great. Yeah. Man, this has been fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I think it's been very interesting. It's, it, these things are always great. You never quite know where they're going to go. We always have an idea of what the story is, but we never know where it's going to go. And this has been, this has been really encouraging. I think it's just, it's a great thing to, again, just to go back to, you know, we focus on our own health, we focus on our own fitness, but why, why are we doing it? What is one of the, one of the greatest takeaways from it? It's passing it on. It's passing it on through the generations. And that's a great thing. Um, thank you so much. 
I appreciate it. Good luck. Keep us posted on how you do. Uh, I hope the jujitsu goes well. And, uh, you know, I keep, keep inspiring your kids. That's, that's the best people that you can inspire. Will do. It's been an honor to be invited on here, John. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot, man.